Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about F5's APM module. F5's APM module, otherwise known as the Access Policy Manager, is actually an add-on to the Big IP LTM module, which allows users to access internal resources externally via a remote access gateway. This means that all users can access internal resources via PCs, Macs, iPads uh, and Android devices uh, in a secure and managed fashion. So the first thing I'm going to do is log into the box and just show you what the GUI looks like. Okay, as you can see here, we've actually got an access policy uh, tab. Uh, the way this is managed is if you go down to resource provisioning, you'll see here you actually have to resource or provision the access policy manager which is in here. Uh, once that's been provisioned, you'll then have access to the access policy tab and it'll give you access to all the access profiles, the AA servers, ACL, single sign configuration, and BOEM. Uh, so the first thing to mention is actually the way that the Access Policy Manager works. So if you're familiar with F5 devices, you'll be familiar with the concept of virtual servers. So what we do is we look at the virtual servers here, and for example, if I go to the Exchange, sorry, if I go to the APM here, uh, what you can see is you assign an Access Policy profile to the virtual server. This then means that to get to this virtual server, you need to go through the APM profile and policy to access this. Uh, so if I now move down to access policy here on the right hand side, and just to give you a quick overview of what to expect. So these are the, um, these are the profiles that I've got in the access policy manager, uh, and these are all separate profiles which can be associated to a virtual server. So if I go into the APM Jupyter, for example, uh, and look at the settings here, um, as you can see, I have a lot of resources assigned to this actual to this access policy manager. So if I click onto this, it will show me how and what is happening within the policy manager. So if you think of it as essentially as a flow chart, so what's happening is I'm coming in here, the user's coming in, and they're doing a Windows info check to begin with. So what's happening is I'm only allowing users through if they've got Windows 7, for example. Uh, if they haven't got Windows 7, then they will be going straight out because I'll be denying access to them. So within the Access Policy Manager, you can set very granular host checking policies that enable users to uh, enter the network based on their device, their users, uh, and other, other information that you can look into. Uh, so once I've got through that, I've then got a decision box. Uh, if, for example, I click OK, I'll then move on to a login page, go through AD Auth, and then I'll be given full resource sign uh, of resources. If, however, I decide to decline this in the decision box, I'll then go to protect a workspace, which is another feature of the F5. So if a user doesn't have the right host checking credentials, for example, you can put them in a protected workspace and then they'll be able to have access to a machine, but they won't be able to save files uh, on the way out, it will clear the cache and no data will be transferred from the internal resources to their remote machine. Uh, and then within here, if I look at the full resource assigned, I can see what's been, uh, what's been assigned to this user. So what I'm going to quickly do is just show you this in action. So if I just go to the, um, the correct virtual server, for example, uh, so I'll just open up this virtual server here, and go to Tim. Okay, obviously I haven't got any certificates external on this box at the moment as it's just a lab box. But as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm doing the host checking there, so it's checking my machine to see if I've actually uh, got the right operating system. And now you see the two boxes here. So option one was to go into the authentication. So if I now click use my user in here, and this is actually being authenticated against AD. So it's looking for my AD credentials and checking that I'm valid to access these resources. Okay, once I go in here, you can see I've got multiple, um, multiple options. So this is the web top, and within the web top, I've got options like um, OWA web link. So if I click on this, uh, again, no certificate, it'll actually let me see my OWA and log into OWA. Or if I want to go to a Hack Me resource, for example, I click on that, and then it will show me the resource. In addition to that, I can also launch a, launch a uh, network tunnel from here. So externally, if I wanted to full access to a resource, uh, I can click on the test VPN, which is actually allowing me to start a tunnel um, through the F5. As you can see, this is connected, so now all my traffic will be running through this tunnel unless I have split tunneling disabled. So I'm going to disconnect this now and um, just log out, but that was just a quick overview of what it'll look like for your web top based information. 
and obviously my session's finished there so I can click here so I can use session login if I want to but I'm going to accept that. Uh, so going back to the Access Policy Manager uh, it's actually logged me out with my session. So I've got the ability to add in multiple servers for authentication. Uh, this is one of the key aspects of um, Access Policy Manager. So I can have AD authentication, uh, so users have to authenticate using their AD credentials. But in, as well as that, I can have secure ID, for example, as a two-factor option. Uh, you know, this gives an added security to the network resources in which I'm giving access to, uh, and this can be rolled out through the APM policy. Uh, as well as that, I've got single sign-on options. So if I wanted to, I could add single sign-on options to the APM. So when a user logs in, they'll have sessions which will be stored, and then this can be logged into back-end processes. For example, OWA, um, SharePoint, VDI, Citrix, um, you know, VMware. All those, in, all those sort of details can be added in, and I can then do single sign-on to those applications. So I'll just demonstrate that for you quickly as well now. So I've got another box here. So if I go to attend, so this is another F5 virtual server which I've got for Exchange. So again, what I'm doing here is I'm logging into the Access Policy Manager using my AD credentials. But what this will do now is it will actually log me straight into OWA seamlessly. As you can see, it's taken my credentials and logged me straight through. So that has therefore logged me in and I don't have to worry about re-authenticating. So it gives a user a really seamless way to get into all the applications. And this can be set up for multiple applications or just, just the one you've seen here. And then if I sign out and close the window, that will close my session. And it puts me back into the Access Policy Manager. So what you saw there was you know, two different options. Um, all of those were actually configured using a web top. So you've got a web top here. Uh, which actually is essentially a portal which looks after and stores all the resources um, and once I've got a web top I then actually associate um, applications or portals um, portal access to the web top as you can see here I've got some resources that I can assign again this is a test box so uh, these are all test users and test uh, resources that I've been using as well as that I can uh, look at reports and customization so if I was to look at reports to see who had been on the box, I can just run a quick report in the last hour and this will give me information on all the sessions and the users that have logged in. So obviously I've logged in to check, um, to, to, to demonstrate the box and if I was to click on the session ID, this would then give me a bigger great breakdown of what's actually happened within the box. So as you can see, username in there and information regarding how I've logged in. So it's a very, it's a very granular reporting and it will tell you exactly what the user's been up to, what they've tried to access, and if they haven't or have been successful. Uh, in addition to that, I can actually customise a page. So if I was to go to common page styles, for example, and then under the, oh, select my profile. So Pim Jupiter, and then click English as a language. I can then change this, put a different logo in. So if I wanted to put the logo in there, a corporate branded logo, for example, I can do, um, and change the colours. By simply saving that, I can then change the look and feel of the front page and make it corporate and branded. Okay. Um, one quick thing that I'm going to show you as well, which I think is very important, is the host checking ability. So if I go into here, access policy, and then into the edit. If I was to add in host checking, for example, I add an item in here, and then I go to authentication, and then client side checks. I've got a plethora of client side checks. So as well as um, allowing users to only access resources they're allowed to, you can actually make sure their device is exactly as it should be. So I can do an AV check on them, a Windows file check, a Windows info check, uh, and also things like a machine info check and registry check. And if I wanted, I could also put a certificate. If you've got a CA, you could put a certificate on the, on the unit, on the device, and only that machine would then be able to access this policy and this box. So essentially that's it for, um, for Access Policy Manager, obviously we can go into a lot greater detail but as a quick overview that's sort of what it does. Um, I'm also going to do another video showing you how to configure a policy which will be, which will be after this. So if you want to have a look at that, that will give you information about how to configure a policy and any details and a bit more in-depth configuration guidance. So thank you for that and um, hopefully that's given you a bit of a brief overview of F5 APM. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for the next uh, next installment.